It's the normal distribution. Carton of orange juice should contain 500 mils. Uh, normal distribution mean is 502.5, standard deviation 0.8. Before we even read the question, uh, let's define the variable x to equal the volume of the carton, then x for the normal. And, and notice in here that you know we always define the distribution with the mean and then the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, even though we use the standard deviation in the calculations. Okay, and the picture here is this 502.5 is the mean, standard deviation 1.8. So part A. Find the probability that carton chosen at random contains more than 500. So we put 500 on, we, we shade the region we want, and we know this the answer is going to be more than 50%, right? Because it's symmetrical about here. 50% uh, here, and this is asymptotic, it doesn't touch the x axis. Because in theory, we could have you know a, a very, very full carton of uh, juice. In, in practice, well, it's not going to get much bigger than. Uh, about here, which is, I don't know, maybe three, four, five, six, seven mils above. So that, let's try it. Probably x is greater than 500. Menu. Calculations. And we want a probability. And we want a distribution. And we want the norm CDF. So that accumulates. If you think you've got the wrong one, then you, you'll see from the, uh, the entry here. So lower bound, well, that was 500, wasn't it? The upper bound was something very, very big. Now, if you realise that, do you remember with the normal distribution, um, you know, 99.9% .9 of all the data lies within three standard deviations. So as long as you go beyond four, five, six standard deviations for the upper bound, you've pretty much contained almost all the distribution. So you just put a, usually just put a big number in there, as long as it's super big compared to four or five standard deviations above the mean. Okay, so the mean is five or two point five, I think. And that was 1.8, and I press OK. There we go, and we've got the answer right in there. So what we'll do is we'll just take this down below, and we'll write the answer here, uh, 0 0.918, and that is to 3SF. OK, so see that that seems to fit. It, we knew it was more than 50%, and there we go. So part B. 10% uh, of the cards contain less than K, less than K. So we need to shade 10% less than K here, and that is what we're looking for, okay? So this time, do you notice we're given the actual the area or the probability? We want to work backwards towards the actual value. And on the first question, can you see we were given, we were given the value and wanted the area, okay? So that gives you a hint that this is inv norm, okay? And again, if you're not too sure, then what, once you click the, the buttons, so I'm going to click on here, I'm going to do menu, calculations, and probability again. And this is distributions, inverse normal. All right, and the area is 10%. And it always asks for the area from the left all the way up to the particular boundary you want. And the, let's get rid of that, oh, 0 0.1. Uh, the mean again is 502.5. Standard deviation to 1.8, and there we go, 500.19. Okay, so the answer here is K equals, I suppose it is 500 to 3 sig fig. I think I, if I was writing this as an answer, I'd probably put the full answer here, put all of this, I'd write this down, then I'd just round it off in the answer, final answer here. Um, okay, so final thing, uh, 200 cartons are examined. Okay, find how many of the cartons um, contain less than 498. Well, first of all, we need to put the 498 on again. So this is back to part A, really, isn't it? You know, what's the percentage of the population that have a volume less than 498? So let's do that here. So uh, P of X less than 498 uh, equals... And then we go again, menu, calculation, oh, sorry, menu, so calculation. Actually, let, just, let me just show you that um, what I'm doing here, I'm in a, in, I'm in a notes page. Um, you guys will be actually on a calculator page. So let, let me just show you the calculation, the calculator page that you'll be using. Right? You go menu, and you can see you will stretch the probability. So menu, probability, distributions, and you'll be doing norm CDF. Okay, and I think the lower bound was now 498, upper bound is something big. 
uh, mean is uh, 502.5 again standard deviation is 1.8 okay so uh, this is the idea I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my little picture here okay and so that's the probability that one carton um, weighs less than 498 so you know very 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 um, that doesn't feel right does it 5.2.5 because this probability should be very very small and this seems to be a very very big number so let's just go back to our calculation and see what we did uh, non CDF lower limit oh look what we've done we found from 498 all the way up so the answer is actually 1 minus this okay you see what we did see well not what we did the mistake I made uh, menu probability distributions norm CDF so the lower bound will go zero the upper bound is 498 see the mistake I made before 498 was the lower bound then I went to 5000 okay so that was a beautiful mistake this is 502.5 and this here is the 1.8 let's see if that makes a difference of course it does all right so a tiny probability which is kind of what we suspected here. Now that that feels better, doesn't it? All right. Uh, but now that's just for one carton, and the question says that there are a batch of 200, 200 cartons. So basically, we're just going to do 200 times this probability because this is the percentage of all cartons that would be less than 498. So down here, we do uh, basically just this number here, and do times it by the 200. We get the answer 1.24 so on average out of a batch of 200 there's only kind of one ish that actually has less than 498 mils and this is kind of like quality control in some kind of production factory and if you've only got one carton out of you know 200 that's got less than 498 mils I suppose it seems pretty fine yeah okay so remember the differences between uh, norm CDF and in norm and just a reminder that we actually we, we pretty much never ever for our calculations uh, use this poor guy norm PDF norm PDF actually allows you to sketch a curve um, and then use some calculations on the curve itself but for us we just draw a curve by hand and then we get norm CDF and inv norm to do all our calculations for us okay so you probably never use the norm PDF in your um, SLAI career okay hope that's helped